All right, cool. So we're going to do a quick orientation to the iStat, uh, which we use all the time for point of care testing at the bedside here in Kaiser Oakland ED. Um, essentially, we have three things that we can use with it. We can do the CG8 cartridge, which is our comprehensive. It does a full chemistry and H&H &H plus a gas, either venous or arterial. We have a troponin cartridge. These are used very, very infrequently, uh, but they can give us a troponin within 10 minutes. Uh, the 4 and the 8 cartridge here, uh, these are actually a full result of within 120 seconds or 2 minutes. The 4, by the way, is almost all exclusively used for the lactic acid that it gives us within 2 minutes for screening for sepsis. Um, just as a general rule of thumb, the 4s and 8s are good for 2 months, and these guys are good for 2 weeks once out of the refrigerator. So they really, once they're removed from the refrigerator, need to be used almost immediately. So that's an important consideration with these. You'll also note that they're all dated. You should never see an iStat cartridge out on the floor in either of our EDs, Kaiser Oakland or Richmond, uh, undated. If they're undated, throw them away for the most part. Okay, uh, in terms of an orientation then to the iStat itself, there's a couple things to know. Uh, on the front face here, we've got a variety of keys. We've got your scan key, we've got your forward and backwards arrows, we've got your power button, print button, menu button. As we keep going around, you'll notice on the side we have an aware point. This allows us to actually track where our iStats are in the event that we can't find one. We've got our critical lab values located over here. Down at the bottom, we have our cartridge port where we put our CG4, 8, or troponin cartridges in. At the top, we have our IR port, and we also have our special battery compartment where we have our non-standard ultra-life lithium batteries. It's important that these are not, in fact, it's actually a test question. These are not standard batteries. Essentially, this is what's going on here. You have to push this tab in firmly in order to get it to slide up and over and everything else. Ah, there we go, good. Okay, so in terms of orientation to turning this guy on, you're gonna press your power button right here. These are gonna be um, essentially bleached in between uh, uses for patients and things like that, so we're not transmitting infectious diseases. We have two options here, last result or an ice stack cartridge, one or two. We're pretty much always just gonna press the number Two for iStart cartridge. We're going to scan our operator ID. And then we're going to put our patient number. So if a patient had a wristband on right now, you would just go ahead and scan the uh, barcode on the wristband. That's a standard looking barcode, but I'm going to enter in our John Doe number. And then we're going to scan a cartridge lot. So for this particular uh, demonstration, I'm going to do the CG8. Again, that's a full chemistry, a full gas, and an H&H. &H. These are amazing. You get all these results in 120 seconds. Really, really cool cartridge. So we're going to press scan. And now we're ready to take the cartridge out. In terms of looking at the actual cartridge itself, you've got a port here for putting in your sample. Uh, we like to do this without using a twin pack needle. FYI, you can actually just use a regular syringe and essentially put it in like that, using, not using a needle, so it's more workplace safety there. Uh, and then you just close the gate. You want your sample ultimately to approximate this illustration here. This center bubble here has an analyte in it that allows it to do its QC. QCs are done on these internally, Q8 hours, and there's also an electronic simulator that lab will bring down. We don't have to worry about that, but it is on your test. And then don't manipulate these contacts with your fingers because it can ruin the sample. All right, so then we're gonna just introduce a little bit of sample here. So it looks just like the image. Once it looks like the image, we close the gate. And then we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna put it in our cartridge port. So it's gonna identify the cartridge. We're using, of course, fake blood. This is a lab, uh, essentially a QC uh, reagent that we use to figure out whether this is testing accurately or not. In about 20 seconds to 30 seconds, it's gonna say, what kind of sample was this? And who is the doctor that ordered it? So you have to put that information in. It's easy for nurses to walk away in the middle of one of these tests and then come back without putting that information in and it'll cancel the test. Nothing is more frustrated than a canceled ISTAT test. Okay, so here we go. After about 30 seconds, we've now got our first screen. So it asks us what our sample type is. Often it's venous. So I'll press two for venous and then press enter. And then for field one, at Oakland here, you're gonna just put in Dr. Leahy's number, 80362. At Richmond, you're actually going to scan the MD's barcode. So it's a slightly different flow, and if you're at Richmond, you're going to use this to scan a barcode that presumably is at the nurse's station. So I'll press enter. And then once that's done, if I'm not doing an ABG, where FiO2 and temperature, for instance, are required, I would go ahead and press page over. And then we're going to wait. And you can see here, 120 seconds, we have our countdown timer that's already happening, and we're almost ready to go. 
All right, so here we go. Here's our uh, result screen. Uh, you'll see, first of all, looking at the top here, it says action range flag, scanner enter code. So at Kaiser Oakland, we're gonna do a zero to accept and a one to cancel. At Richmond, it's a zero to accept or a nine to cancel. Uh, and so just figure out if you're, if you're at Oakland or Richmond, which way you're supposed to go. I wanna point out, by the way, as we look at this view screen, these heavy black arrows up or down indicate a critical lab value. Um, so if I page over using this arrow, we will see more critical lab values. Each one of these heavy black arrows represents a value, a critical lab value, that needs to be reported in the critical lab value reporting tool, and it's really critical that you do that as part of our documentation standards in both campuses, just as an FYI. So um, you can see here the sodium of 159 is critical, and we would have to document that in addition to the potassium of 6.1 and the glucose of 37, okay? Venus uh, pH, by the way, and PCO2 do not need to be charted uh, as per our current standards for critical lab values, but the chemistries on the other side do, as does the um, lactic acid on the CG4 cartridge and coarse troponins. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna essentially accept the results by pressing a zero, and then I'm gonna press enter. And once I've done that, I'm now ready to print if I want to, and we can do a quick photo of the print uh, for your perusal later. But essentially this button here, the print button, if you hold the device and point it directly at our local printers, like so, press and hold the print button, it'll go ahead and print out a display of these re results, and then you can just go ahead and dock it, and then they'll synchronize into results review uh, for the doctors to look at at a later point. And that's it, that concludes the iStat. We'll go over a few more of the idiosyncrasies around um, the iStat drawing. Uh, I think one thing I do wanna say, when we actually do your competency, one thing I do wanna say though is, do the best for the patient by always running the blood samples the moment they come out of the patient's body. I actually did want to include this. Many things like lactic acid and glucose will, and of course arterial and venous blood gases will change as they sit at the bedside. So the faster we can pull it out of the patient and get it into a cartridge and get it running, the more accurately it'll actually reflect what's happening with the patient currently.